Hey guys, welcome to Flat Top King. Hey, today is all about the new culinary series, Blackstone Griddle. You guys stay tuned. All right, so here's the deal. Uh, once we got the Weber and the Traeger, there's been a lot, a lot, a lot of people wanting to know my pros and cons. The last pros and cons we did, you guys can check that video out right there, is basically on the griddles that we had at the time. Well, when technology changes, when Weber and Traeger and Blackstone all up their game, you gotta change with the times. So now, I thought it was important for us to upgrade our Blackstone to be more competitive with the other griddles, right? It's hard to compare something when you've got two or three year old model. So here we go. After my research and after a couple people reached out, it came to my mind that Blackstone has developed a new griddle top which is what I've been waiting for. All right, let's talk about some of the key features that this new griddle comes with. When I teach you guys or talk to you guys or cook in front of you guys, I always say it's gotta be about what you like, what you like to eat, what ingredients you like, how you like your stuff cooked. Same thing with the griddles. I get asked all the time, what's my favorite griddle? We're still searching. The point is there's certain things that I look for and it's no difference with this brand or any other brand because it's my personal preference, which might be greatly different than yours with that being said let's check out the features that they have when they're talking about that new griddle top it's talking about how it can independently use all four zones so you can have all true four zone cooking um, the griddle plate is made different it's supposed to be able to season easier um, it's supposed to have built-in wind guards which a lot of people are talking about which is a pro um, it uses less fuel to maintain because of the wind guards, which helps your griddle stay hotter longer. If that's the case, you're going to use less propane. Okay. All that's included. Um, I'm going to show you one thing real quick. We got to do one to come back to the other. I guess I'm going to talk about it now. The lid. I'm absolutely in love with this feature only because it works for me and my use. I love the fact that on all the other griddles I've ever had, if you wanted a hard shell griddle lid, you had to unscrew it and then it's basically unusable after you take it off because you're either gonna have to screw it on or you're worried about scratching the exterior and all that stuff. With this new griddle, you just got male and female ends and it just slides right off just like that. So when I'm not filming, to me, that's perfect because now I can use the lid as a dome and or as a uh, protective for the outdoors, whatever. It's a multi-purpose. The lid itself and the instructions say do not use longer than 10 minutes at a time. So obviously you'll have to close it, melt your cheese, open it up, let it cool down, I'm sure, because you don't want this metal to warp. But hey, at least we're getting closer to a dome lid that you can use finally 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 so two pluses so when you say that positives. you can use you mean you can close it for 10 minutes while the griddle is on correct which you probably shouldn't really need to melt anything for longer than 10 minutes anyway right well you know a lot of pe people want to do pizzas you know oh. or stuff like that where you know you have that dome effect and uh, i've always said there's certain tools for the job and i've never thought pizza is the greatest on the griddle i'd much rather do pizza and other things that's a another story for another day but i do understand the idea of the 10 minutes fondly i'm just happy we got to the 10 minute mark versus you can't do it at all i'm happy with that i'm happy the way it comes off it's good i've already released this griddle so i didn't look like a fool but i am going to show you the underneath side of the griddle Ugh. okay so that's their new design um it's supposed to help with warping which I think is a phenomenal idea because we know that's a problem in the industry. Um, it looks like it's just welded great. I mean, there's, this is extremely heavy. It's gonna carry the heat. You can see the built-in wind guards on the side. Plus you got that X frame right there. Um, it's just, uh, it's secured everywhere as can be, which is really nice. Um, getting back to the burners, it looks like they're same burner system. Um, there's a lot of uh, areas for the wind to come up underneath and uh, let it breathe, which is a good job. All right, I decided to get the cabinet model because I did have some other ideas in mind. Just going to show you underneath. It's got like a little shelf right here. Um, and there's your propane tank for storage. Really easy to install, nothing to it. And then your shelves collapse on this one, okay? 
you have your paper towel holder or a trash bag holder right here. This is a side shelf. A lot of people ask about how, I've always said one of the things that you should always have is um, like an exterior um, table of some sort to hold your ingredients, like more side shelf table, whatever, however you decide to do it, that's what you need. So when talking about this, I'm just gonna show you really quick. This locks in at the bottom, give it a good go. You got a little pin here. Uh, and then all of a sudden you clip your edges. I mean, really, really, really easy, especially if you don't have level ground. And then there's your side table. So you come out here, you got something to put a little bit more uh, product on, which is what we're all looking for. Um, I don't necessarily think I'm gonna be using this feature, um, but I do think it is a, a multi-use feature for a lot of people, and I think it's gonna benefit a lot of people. All right, your paper towel holders right underneath here, just kind of click up a little bit and rotate, it, and there you go, okay? And then to close it, just like that. So very, very, very good uh, use of a tool. It's hidden, it's out of the way. So, so far I'm extremely impressed. It's got the four big caster wheels on the bottom. You guys know I love my girdles with caster wheels because I move them a lot. So here's the button ignition. Um, it's just it's uh, just like my air fryer one. Uh, you has got a battery behind it and this is what's gonna light your burners. And speaking of the air fryer one, yeah, so we sold the air fryer model, um, and then we took that money and we bought the black zone with our own money. Um, I was lucky enough to get my military discount, so that helped some. For you guys, are uh, if you guys are interested, uh, a great thing about Lowe's, I'm sure about Home Depot, I'm sure about Ace. A lot of these big box stores now are putting together floor models. It's up to you whether or not you want to put it together. Um, I had a, a little idea of what I was looking for, and once I saw it already put together, I went ahead and pulled the trigger knowing that um, that this is what I wanted. So just saves you some time. Uh, They're really nice to come out. We had four people loading it. I joked with them, I said, if you have four people loaded in my truck, who's gonna help me unload it? And they said, make us a burger and we're good. So <laughs> anyways, all right. So my first impressions, um, it's, it's not overbearing. I've already had a black stone. The air fryer was massive. I really, really like this combination. I love the new color scheme. Um, there's a lot of things to like about it. I really haven't knocked it so far. Uh, so we're gonna start the seasoning phase. While I'm doing that, I'm gonna get that measuring tape out so you guys can measure left to right. And then if you want to, I can pull that table back out and measure how deep that table would be. Um, I'm pretty impressed. For, for what I want, I haven't seen any knocks yet. And I'm really, 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 really interested in how low can it go and um, the independent zones, because I think that's a fair assessment when you talk about the new technology that's out in the griddle world. We just pulled all the tape off the griddle and just noticed this right here. This is a big change from my other Blackstone. Maybe I'm crazy, maybe the other one was supposed to have it. I bought it as a floor model too, so I didn't put it together. But these stoppers right here are what I swore my other one needed. So this grease trap goes right in the back and my other one used to hang and I used to have to rig it to where it would come flat this is a great situation right here. And it also looks like, and I could be mistaken as well, that this grease trap is actually smaller. It's not knocked out near as much, which will stop the food. Uh, I score a lot as it is, but uh, it looks like that might uh, stop some of the scoring from the food going in there. Just got some simple uh, dishwashing soap right here and some water. Um, just go ahead and get all that nasty shipping grease off. All that other stuff. Something's wrong with my grill. It's not supposed to be like this. Basically what you're doing now, you're just getting all the shipping oils off of it. Um, any type of debris, um, stuff like that from the, from the manufacturer to keep it from rusting. You don't want to burn that into your griddle. I can tell you right now, just from washing it, that when we talked about the Traeger griddle and I decided not to sand it down just to be curious, this is extremely... Uh, evenly smooth this is way different than the traeger griddle this is um it's it's i i have a video of how to season a brand new blackstone griddle because we use the um the sandpaper just to knock down some of the rough edges i know some people use grill bricks um i'm impressed with the griddle top the way it is i'm going to season this uh just like the traeger because we had such good success with the grapeseed oil and how we did it um you're able to feel the same thing I'm feeling. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. This is It feels nothing. pretty smooth. Yeah. I mean, it's not glass smooth, but uh, I'm very happy the way it feels. Very happy. 
All right, we're just gonna draw it off. Now we're gonna turn on the griddle for about 10 to 15 minutes on high. One thing I have noticed, and it's gonna absolutely drive me nuts until I fix it, but I can fix it, is my stupid griddle is not flush in there. I don't know, I, I've tried to mess with it. I'm sure I can put a spacer or a washer right here, something like that to help it. But until we get to that point, I'm going to keep on keeping on, you know? All right, the griddle top is completely dry. This is the first. And they're all lit. So you have a small space under, under, uh, underneath there. You can see them lit up. Turn it down just a hair. So it's on high right now. Yeah, for about 10 or 15 minutes, you'll start seeing the darkening happen. Speaking of seasoning, let's talk about a different type of seasoning. You guys ready? Thanks to each and every one of you that supported this far, some of you have actually caught on to the tips and tricks I have along the way. A little seasoning here, a little combination there, a bottle here and a bottle there. It's finally official. Drum roll, please. The new Flat Top King seasoning. And we thought what better way to bring out a seasoning to the game than bring out two. So let's introduce smash that and shake that. So the idea is you guys know that we absolutely love, or at least I do, my charcoal and pellet smoker. That's a flavor that I'm never, ever, ever going to be tired of. But there's one thing missing when you make those incredible burgers. There's one thing missing when you make those incredible steaks. I love that charcoal grill flavor. I miss it all the time when I'm griddling. So I had an idea. We got a, a chance to go down to Birmingham, Alabama for these seasonings. And on the way down there, we're both brainstorming, how can we make this better? And I kept my heart, my flavor palette, everything kept going back to the grill. So that's how we introduced this. It's a great beef flavor. Um, it's got a uh, great assortment of like charcoal, smoke, um, just one of those all purpose, like just really, really good seasonings that really enhance the burger flavor. It doesn't overpower it. It doesn't change the flavor. It goes from here to here in a hurry, and I swear to you, that's what I've been about. While we're going down Fantastic there. Fantastic on a smash burger. You guys will see, I promise you. Now, your grand is gonna be my opinion, but until you guys get it, you guys will understand. All right, going down there, my wife said, what about creating a different one? You always talk about having a good AP. While we're down there, let's do two for one and create a good all purpose. So that's what we did. Trial and tribulation, truly action. Trials and tribulations? There you go. Thank you, all right. I said, why not, right? So what I call it is like the big four. You got your salt, pepper, garlic, and butter. I think it's fantastic on vegetables. It's fantastic on chicken, on seafood. Pork? pork. We had on pork the other day. The problem is when I go in my pantry and I've got 78 spices, there are a select few that I end up grabbing over and over and over again. Not many times will I venture off and say, let's try this on this, unless I'm confident or I just want to taste it. And I said, if they can do it, then why can't I? And I think we've got a home run right here. This, for so far, for the people who've got a chance to taste it, has been blowing it out of the water. They absolutely love this one, but this one seems to stay kind of like in its space until they get a little bit more creative. For burgers. Yep, and this one seems to be taken over in a hurry. And it's actually surprising because that's not the way we imagined. But with that being said, I do have to give a shout out. Not only to the viewers, to the people that's commented, that supported us along the way, because without you guys, this would not be possible. I also want to give a shout out to the microwave queen. That's me. <laughs> and give a shout out where due. She actually designed these labels one night while I was asleep and uh, woke up the next morning and she had both of them already done. And I was just absolutely blown away. I think they're fantastic. They're bold. They're bright. And that's kind of like what we imagine our brand being like. And the names. And the names. <sighs> what better way to create a smash burger? which smash that seasoning, right? All it does, it enhances that flavor and you almost get that back of the mind note of like, hey, did it come off of charcoal? You get that Maillard reaction off the griddle then you combine it with this. Absolutely fantastic. And of course, you got your vegetables, you got your potatoes, you got your hash browns. It's just a good all-purpose seasoning and a swear bomb. So these will be available on our website. You guys can check out theflattopking.com where we actually have them available along with our finally our hats for sale you guys have asked for those as well four different ones we've had those on the back burner it's just taking a little time because i told you guys some of you guys i said mark today's calendar down 
when you commented. And I said, because we got big things coming and we want to uh, announce these at the same time. So our hats are for sale, our spices for sale. Check out theflattopking.com. You guys can check that stuff out. I'm sure there's gonna be a race to see who can get to it first. Thank you guys, thank you guys, thank you guys and gals so much for the support. Let's get back to the Blackstone seasoning process. After all that talking and all the retakes and all the stuff it takes for me to mumble over my words, it's been about 15, 20 minutes. Um, the Blackstone's still on high. You guys can see they've got some nice color going on. Just try to see what we got going on. So 470 to 500, 529. Ooh, 444. I ain't good. Four. 440. 540. 540. And basically 500. Woo! They're all the same thing? Hmm, I guess. All right, we're gonna have to keep an eye on that right burner. That's the first knock I've seen so far, but I'm gonna keep on. Um, I'm using grapeseed oil. It's only the second time I've ever done it, but I am gonna tell you that I am absolutely ecstatic the way my Traeger uh, griddle turned out when I seasoned it. So I'm gonna follow the same steps. This is not as rough starting off with as the Traeger was. So I might not have to do as many coats. I'm gonna light coat. Uh, you guys can check out any video out there. The thing about seasoning is you wanna go light oil, very light coats, on the inside, on the outside, and let the smoke burn off. It should take 10 to 15 minutes, and then you want to redo that process. We're gonna to continue to do that. I'm gonna show you what the start looks like and the beginning and the end looks like. All right, obviously your first couple of coats are gonna take a little bit more oil than necessary. It's important to have the right tools. Some people use heat gloves. I like to use tongs. It gets your hands away from the griddle. It's gonna help, um, get your uh, paper towels lubricated we're already off to a better start the last time we did this it was ripping my paper towels so you guys can see how nice and smooth this griddle top already is and remember light coating if you got too much oil it's going to pull and it's not going to work it's going to end up flaking so you can always use the rest of your paper towel to dig up that rest of the oil so i'm going to do this steps i'm going to get the edges the inside and outside, and then we'll see how many coats it takes. All right, before I start seizing all the other steps, we've only done one step. I just want to shoot it with a gun because I feel very frustrated. This is why people ask me all the time, what's your favorite griddle? So far, I've been absolutely ecstatic from the ground up because it's everything I want. And then you get to the realization is, it doesn't really have even cooking, which is what I wanted. Holy. So let's start in the middle, 545 on high. 618, can you guys see that? Yeah. And then over here. But then once you start moving up, you can drastically see the difference. So when you're talking edge to edge heating, on the bottom, same thing. And you can actually tell because it's not hot enough to season the oil. Since grapeseed oil has a high smoke point and since the whole thing itself has oil on it, you can actually tell your hot zone, anything over that seasoning, that hot uh, smoking point because that's what's gonna season first. It'll take a while for your edges, the edges to, um, to season. So that's, that's part of griddle cooking. <sighs> All right, so we got done with the, the uh, seasoning process. I think I ended up putting five coats on there. I'm very confident in it. You can just tell by the way the paper towel uh, reacts to the griddle, how smooth it is. There's no grabbing. Um, I was able to turn everything down on low. This is gonna be a hot spot and everything around it is gonna be the sweet spot or the, the cool spot. So uh, we'll address the very first cook. I might switch things up a little bit because now I'm a little bit frustrated. So we might do something a little bit different on the first cook, change things up a little bit, and then I'll get a true low, uh, our very first cook, and then we'll try to hit our hot spots doing something else. So if you guys are interested, you guys can check out that first cook. Other than that, if you take everything else off of that, I'm extremely impressed with the build, 
Um, I really like the side table. Uh, really quick, the measuring tape, just to give you an idea of how wide it is. Uh, 65 and a half inches. And then if we bring this table out, uh, the side tables, basically 21 inches by 11 and a half inches. They are small when you talk about other side tables, but you do have this option for your table. Uh, so it won't stick out any further. So I could just do it like this. So then this side table kicks out and makes up for it at 47 inches. Okay. So that gives you an idea of the ballpark of how big it is. I'm sure it's the same height off the off the off the uh, the bottom. 36 inches somewhere through there. Uh, it's a true four burner. Um, I like everything about it. So the one thing we're missing is how low can it go? Ooh. Is that our kid getting off of the bus? Nope, it's your dad. We'll call him back. All right. <laughs> Sorry, father-in-law. <laughs> yep. All right. So the the true number is how low can we go on low? We'll get that on our very first cook. And we'll mess around the temperatures and then i want to mess around the knobs to see if we could turn off one and all that stuff uh, but ultimately you know if it's not even with all four of them on low it's just not going to be an even griddle and that's just the part of it all right guys that's it in a nutshell like i said i'm extremely happy with it we're, we're just gonna have to test that griddle top out test the temperatures give it a good go and then give a good assessment when we compare it to other griddles um, if you guys are interested, we have a, a membership button down below. It's that join button. Um, it's a program. You guys can just help out the channel. We thank each and every one of you for taking time for doing so. Don't forget, you can also check us out on The Griddle Group on Facebook is where we talk about griddles, where this griddle right here in particular has a lot of uh, support going behind it. So I'm glad to introduce it to the family. Um, thanks for watching. Don't forget to press that subscribe button, pound the notification button, share it with your friends. Peace.